Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the force velocity relationship. So the force velocity relationship is different uh, between concentric and eccentric contractions. So I'm gonna start by discussing how, what this relationship means and during a concentric contraction. Um, so this relationship is very important in determining the amount of force that a single muscle fiber is able to produce. Um, so this relationship is just basically saying that how much force the fiber can produce depends on how quickly the fiber shortened or how fast the fiber contracted. So the faster a sarcomere shortens, the less time it has to form cross bridges and forming cross bridges is really how the fiber is going to produce force. Okay, so the fewer cross bridges we form, the less force that that sarcomere is going to be able to produce. The faster the sarcomere shortens, the fewer cross bridges it is able to make. Okay, so faster contraction equals less force production. Slower contraction means there's more time to form cross bridges and that means that we're able to produce more force. So a slowly contracting muscle fiber can produce more force than a quickly contracting one. And then we could look at it the other way too, is that the more force a muscle fiber needs to produce, the slower it must contract. Okay, so the slower it contracts, the more force it can produce, but also the more force we need to produce, the slower we must contract. So think about like if you're going to bend down and pick up a really big heavy box or like maybe you're moving a refrigerator with a friend or something. So you're picking up something really heavy. You're going to do that by moving slowly. So you're going to pick the thing up and you're going to move slowly, contract slowly. And that's because as we contract slowly, we're able to produce more force than if you just try to pick it up like it was an empty box. Okay, so when the more force we need to produce, the slower the muscle must contract to produce that amount of force. So the less force a muscle needs to produce, the faster it can contract. In that case, it wouldn't matter if we contract slowly or quickly because we'd be able to produce enough force um, because we didn't need as much force in that case. Um, so this relationship always applies during concentric muscle contraction. Okay, and we'll talk about um, power. Um, we'll talk about power in another lecture. So power is not the same thing because you may be thinking like, oh, well, when I want to pick up something really heavy, I do it faster. Well, you do it faster. That means that you have greater power, but you're actually producing less muscle force um, as you are exerting more power. Okay, so you might be moving with more power because you have more speed, but at the expense of like your muscle force is at the expense of speed. Um, so moving something quickly will result in less force production during a concentric contraction. Okay, so uh, power production, oh, here we go. <laughs> power production is a trade-off between velocity and force generation. Here we go. Uh, power is the rate of doing work, like we've talked about in other lectures. Um, so we can calculate power by multiplying force and velocity. Um, velocity being the linear displacement over time. So power production can be increased by increasing force or velocity of an activity. All right, so we can have more power by producing more force or moving with greater speed that will increase our power. But it's always a trade-off the speed and the force are always a trade-off because the faster we contract, the less force we produce. Okay, so because of the force velocity relationship, changes in velocity influence the force production and vice versa. Okay, so uh, we can increase our power by increasing the force or increasing the velocity or both. Um, <laughs> but as I'm saying here, um, they're really a trade-off. It's a trade-off between the two. So it'd be very difficult to increase force and velocity at the same time to increase power.
Okay, so during an eccentric contraction, it's a little bit different. Um, so force generation equal to that of concentric contraction requires less activation, less energy, and less cross bridge cycling. So what we're saying is that during eccentric contraction, we are actually more efficient at producing force. So if we're producing the same amount of force during an eccentric contraction or a concentric contraction, the eccentric to produce that same amount of force required less activation, less energy, and less cross bridge cycling. So it was more efficient. It required less energy. That means that in an eccentric contraction, we're capable of greater maximal force production than during concentric. Uh, so we could look at the same exact muscle and maximum contraction in an eccentric contraction will always be greater than the maximum contraction in a concentric contraction of the same exact muscle. And um, that is because the eccentric is so much more efficient that if we apply all the same resources during an eccentric contraction, the result will be a greater amount of force than all of the same resources during a concentric contraction. Um, the mechanisms for why that is are frequently debated, but I'm gonna discuss some of those here. Um, so most likely cross bridges are remaining bound during an eccentric contraction, whereas in a concentric contraction, there's cross bridge cycling. Um, so as long as there's still a signal to contract happening, there's still an action potential in the muscle, um, the cross bridges are forming, pulling, breaking, forming, pulling, breaking. So they're cross bridge cycling that are consistently shortening the sarcomeres further and further. Um, but it's estimated or you know, hypothesized that in eccentric contraction, the cross bridges are remaining bound rather than cycling. Uh, so that is right there gonna cost less energy. It's gonna cost less ATP um, because we're not using ATP for every time the cross bridges are binding and releasing and binding and releasing. So that's a lot of ATP saved. Uh, cross bridges can continue to be formed throughout the eccentric contraction. And once they form, they likely remain attached until the contraction ceases. So rather than like in a concentric contraction where we have the cross bridge cycling where it's continually happening, in an eccentric contraction, it's more likely that once the cross bridge forms, it stays formed and then new ones continue to be formed as long as that eccentric contraction is continuing. Um, so the result is less ATP for the cross bridge cycling and more in total number of cross bridges formed. Um, because they continue to form and add on top of the ones that have already formed. So, <clears throat> so as you remember from what I've discussed previously, um, more cross bridges forming means more force production. Okay, so this means more cross bridges form than during a concentric contraction, so that's greater force. Uh, cross bridges are probably broken by mechanical means during eccentric contraction instead of using ATP. So in a concentric contraction, cross bridges are formed using ATP and those bonds break using ATP. In an eccentric contraction, it's more likely that the bonds that the cross bridges are breaking by mechanical means, meaning like they're just ripped apart, they're pulled apart by mechanical means because the, the muscle is lengthening during that contraction. And so then when they are pulled apart, that's the end of that cross bridge. Um, and so, again, we're saving more ATP and we're not using as much ATP to break those cross bridges like we are in a concentric contraction. That also might be why we are, uh, we get a lot more sore because of eccentric contractions. Uh, if you think about delayed onset muscle soreness, DOMS, uh, that happens in response to eccentric muscle contractions. So this might be part of why that takes place. Is it could be because the cross bridges are broken mechanically instead of using ATP, and that might lead to more uh, muscle soreness and protein breakdown and more need for repair of muscle tissue. Um, velocity has less effect on eccentric muscle contraction 
because the tendons stretch rapidly during the action to add additional tension as the muscle begins to generate force. Okay, so what we're saying is that the force velocity relationship really applies to the concentric contraction and not as much, not nearly as much in the eccentric contraction. Um, and that's because in the eccentric contraction, we're able to generate so much more force in the first place for all these reasons that we're discussing here. Um, and partly because the tendon is able to sort of take up the slack. Um, and so the speed of the contraction is less critical because the tendon is elastic and it's taking up the slack as the muscle is lengthening. Okay, so that is all I have for you here. And thank you for watching.